What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. Jordan Brand just keeps pumping out the sneakers. If it doesn't work a first time, try it another time in a different colorway. Today, we're taking a look at a sneaker that is probably sitting on a lot of shelves right now, and I'm pretty sure I know the reason why. We've been talking about it a little bit, but this one in particular left me a little bit confused. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Air Jordan 1 Stealth. Before we get started, I just wanna make sure that this shoe, yeah, it was $180. I just wanna make sure that I got the price right because because we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. All right, so first impressions of the sneaker, it's clean. It's a clean sneaker and it's actually made pretty well. We're gonna talk a little bit about this whole leather situation. I know I'm a little bit late to the game with that, so this discussion may have been had already, but if you're here, I appreciate you tapping in to hear what I gotta say about these. Now, with that aside, honestly, like, let's keep it a buck. If this had Travis Scott or Cactus Jack smacked right here on the medial side of the shoe, people would have called these the sneaker of the year. But because they didn't, because there was no hype associated with it, because these weren't going for much money, on the resale market, even though they seem to have kind of that same color blocking, so it followed that kind of Jordan brand kind of rollout that they tend to do when they put out a sneaker like the Travis Scott Fragment, and then they kind of back it up with the Heritage ones, and then now the Stealth ones. It seems like those two sneakers just are falling flat. It seems like people had money for the Travis Scott's when there was money in them, but a sneaker that there's not really much resale in, even if it's the same color blocking with good materials, Nobody wants it. It's kind of wild, but we're gonna take a little deeper look and then we'll get into what's going on with these. All right, starting with the upper of the shoe here, not a whole lot to talk about, honestly. I mean, the color blocking, we literally just saw this in the Heritage Air Jordan 1. Just replace the red with the gray. You got the white all along the upper of the shoe here, primarily white upper on the shoe with those hints of the gray goat leather around the collar, around the heel, on the swoosh, on the toe box. First thing I will say about these, I do wish that the Ball and Wings logo on the lateral side was a different color. I have seen a couple of people People talk about how they wish it was a different color as well. I don't know, make it white. I feel like it might've popped just a little bit more, but I don't know, it, it is what it is. To get a top down, look at the shoe here. I don't know who laced these at first, but I don't know where this little swirly lace came from, whatever. But in the toe box here, you can see some more of that good goat leather on the toe box. We're gonna talk about goat leather in just a little bit. Nylon tongue here. Let's talk about the tongue tag a bit. Good idea, not as great an execution on the tongue tag. I'm not gonna lie about that because they attempted to stitch the OG Nike Air into this different leather material here. This uh, goat leather, I guess they're calling it here. And it just makes it look kind of weird it's a little knockoffish for me like look at the r on the word air like that that looks kind of wild i'm not gonna lie it's just kind of funny that that's on the front of the tongue there it's kind of that a little bit kind of shoddy stitching like that and then on the back of the tongue it's like quality inspired by the greatest player ever with the gold behind it but it's like all right well, well where's the quality but uh, okay. All white midsole, all stealth gray outsole on these. Nothing really different about that. Let's talk about the laces, of course. Stealth gray laces here. And for the extra set of laces, you have this uh, very interesting recyclable box for the white shoe laces here. On the back of the box here, it talks about the move to zero that Nike has been doing. Of course, with Jordan brand now, and it says that the box is 100% recyclable. That's great. We love the environment. It's actually kind of weird. It's, it's kind of hard to actually keep this box closed here. So, I mean, I guess it is really recyclable because sometimes recyclable stuff tends to feel a little bit cheaper quality. A lot of people have been mentioning the sock liner of the shoe. I took the insole out so we can take a quick look at it, but the lining of the shoe, it is quite interesting. I don't know. It feels like a vintage crew neck that got laundered a bunch of times here. It feels like somebody's carpet in their house when they took a shower on it and stepped on it in their bare feet a lot of times. Like, that's what it feels like. It's not... It's not like bad, like it's smooth, but it feels like it should have been nappy or it used to be a little more nappy, but it got worn down somewhere in the process. So not quite sure what the thinking behind that was, but you know, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's just, um, it's different. And on the insole of the shoe here, stealth gray insole with the color that should have been on the Ball of Wings logo, a white Nike Air logo on the heel. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Air Jordan 1 Stealth. Now, first, let's talk a little bit about this goat leather. These were advertised with having this special kind of goat I guess goat hide or goat skin leather here that really hadn't been used before on an Air Jordan 1. Now, I'm not quite sure if the goat leather is just the gray leather. I'm assuming that it is. And if that's the case, okay, that's fine. But here's the thing about goat leather. Goat leather might be a little deceiving. This shoe was actually being touted as being a little bit more premium. I believe that that's what the brand was going for by having a leather tongue tag as opposed to the regular nylon tongue tag, by having this different kind of 
I don't know, carpet-ish looking sock liner here and having leather that seems to be treated or, or kind of softened up a bit to make it feel a lot softer than normal leather on usual Air Jordans feel. It's not quite as tumbled and I think that's the difference here. Matter of fact, I have my, uh, I talked about this actually in a previous video. This is the Chicago One Custom by One Wilson. He actually took the Heritage Ones, you can see by the tag there, and he actually made them into a Chicago. Great job. But let's talk about the leather on these as opposed to the leather on these. You guys can tell the leather on the Heritage One is more tumbled, it seems, than the leather is, or the gold leather, I guess, on this Stealth One here. So the leather just looks a little bit different than you would normally see on a regular Air Jordan 1. But they, I guess, were trying to say that because of that, that's why the sneaker is a bit more premium. But Here's the thing about goat leather. I actually did a little bit of digging to find out is goat leather truly a better leather? And all the research that I found actually said, no, it's actually not a better leather than cowhide leather. Or I don't know, this might be synthetic leather, so I can't even say this is cow leather, but then actual cowhide leather. For instance, number one, apparently goat skin is thinner, so it makes it feel softer. Even though it's not necessarily a better quality leather, it just may feel softer because the skin of goats and their hides are a little bit softer than that even of calf skin. Not only that, goat leather, believe it or not, is actually cheaper than cow leather because apparently there are more goats available and and their leather available so the supply is a lot more plentiful than cowhide leather. So cowhide leather is actually touted as being a little bit more durable and a little longer lasting but goat leather can be made to feel like it's a little bit more premium so if you put it on a shoe if you put a goat on it and you compare it to Michael Jordan being the goat of course when we talk about the goat of anything we talk about the greatest of all time the top tier the pinnacle the best of the best but when it comes to the actual leather itself as far as goat leather versus a cow leather or a cow hide is it really the best the jury's still kind of out on that one and for 180 dollars not including tax of course like i said previously we all still broke out here joe biden kind of pump fake with that student loan forgiveness everybody thought they were getting checks or another stimulus was coming but that clearly wasn't the case so we're still in a place right now where people are being extremely picky with the sneakers that they're buying and if it doesn't really hit them and they're not really trying to spend the money on a shoe that they can kind of toss to the side and wear it whenever they feel like wearing it People are gonna pass on it. I see a little better reception with these than I did with the Heritage Ones. Honestly, a little better sell through, but these are still sitting a lot of places. And I get it. It's a plain looking shoe at the end of the day. It's, it's basic. And sometimes basic is not a bad thing. The neutral gray 1985 high Air Jordan 1, the OG of the OG with that really nice premium leather at that $200 price tag, super basic looking shoe but a lot of people love that shoe because the quality of the leather was absolutely fantastic better than the leather on the goat leather here if you want my opinion but at the same time it was a really simple colorway super basic so simplicity works if people first of all have the money second of all if the sneaker is limited enough where there's some resale behind it or if people just have enough discretionary spending money to throw down 200 bucks on a shoe like this but again with the flood of sneakers that we've been having lately it's super easy to pass on sneakers like this because if enough people pass on them guess what we can do spin the block at a discount and i think that's what a lot of people are going to do it's not that these are bad these just aren't good enough for people to spend 200 bucks on them right now now 150 160 yeah i think you're going to sell a lot more units of these so I don't know. It's a good shoe overall. It's not bad. I think there is a bit of a marketing tactic, I guess we'll call it, to try to sell them a bit. But honestly, all y'all had to do was slap Cactus Jack right here on the shoe. The shoe would have sold instantly. But eh, what do I know? That's pretty much all that I got to say about the Air Jordan 1 Stealth. Now it's time for you guys to set up down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about these. Were these a must cop? Did you guys pick these up? If you did, are you happy with them? Like I said, they're not a bad pickup. Even at 180, it's a little high, but it's not bad. So sound up down below. Let me know. Of course, for you down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Jordan 1 Stealth. And until next time, I'm out.